Welcome, everyone. I want to introduce Dr. Andrew Sarowitz um, to the podcast. I'm Dr. Dan Greenberg, and this is the Beyond Dentistry podcast. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Happy to be here. Thanks, guys. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about something that I think is unfamiliar to most people. Um, so Dr. Sarowitz, um, he is a pretty interesting guy. He is a dentist by training, but he finds himself doing a lot of different, other, a, a lot of other different things, has a lot of different ventures that he participates in. So I want to start off this podcast with you just explaining um, what you're involved in currently. Um, you can explain kind of your dental background um, and what you're doing now, dental related, but I also want you to talk about everything on the other end of that. Sure. All right. Let me, uh, I'll, I'll blast through the dental stuff so we can do that quick. Um, I, uh, I went to, uh, you know, George Washington for my undergrad and I went to dental school at NYU. Um, I finished back in 09. Crazy, right? Single digits. It's, uh, yeah. it's a scary thing to say, but been, been doing this, uh, I guess for a long time now. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I started my, um, you know, my first dental practice back in 2012. And from that, I kind of parlayed it into just this, you know, crazy expansion when I think about it in hindsight now, you know, you know, 10, 12 years removed. Um, but you know, currently I have five locations on the dental side. I have a few dental related startups that I've been working on in the last few years, and I have a whole bunch of non-dental stuff too that I think is pretty cool and exciting um but I'll kind of leave it to you you know where we want to take this um yeah. you know what what you think people want to hear about the most you know we could we could talk about you know class twos all day or whatever but we're not I, talking about class twos. okay cool it's, it's been a minute since I've done one so it's fine it's good <laughs> all right so tell me a little bit about um one your involvement um within so you're on affiliated with uh, sports teams as uh, mm -hmm. dentists. I want you to just talk about your involvement in that, what you've kind of seen there, how you got into that space. And then, so we'll keep the, this with the dental side first. Um, sure. Okay. And then talk a little bit about your practice, um, how you started your first one, how you built it up to five, mm -hmm. um, and where you see your ultimate goal with that. All right, cool. So, um yeah, the uh, the sports thing. I know it's kind of random. It's it's a little <laughs> niche, I guess. Um, it was something I didn't really know existed until I found myself deep in it after a few years. Um, but apparently, there are like sports dentistry clubs and things, so it does in fact exist. Um, but yeah, I spent. Um, you know, I, my my partners and I we spent. I want to say a little over seven years uh, directly on the medical staff with the Brooklyn Nets. That included going to every home game, um, which sounds super awesome and exciting, less so when you factor in that it, I think if my math is right, it ends up being about 300 hours a year. Um, so it, 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 it was a bit much, but we did it for a really long time. Um, you know, we, we've sort of slowly transitioned out of that kind of game coverage situation. But, um, you know, from that, we spent a little time with the New York Liberty um, and then, um, now I'm, I'm probably doing the most work with the UFC and combat sports athletes in general and stuff like that. That's a little different. Um, you know, we don't go to fights to cover them. It's just for fun, uh, which is yeah. cool. Um, but that kind of stuff is, is typically run by whatever local athletic commission the event is at. So, you know, if they're fighting in Vegas, it's the Nevada state athletic commission that handles all that kind of stuff. Um, but what I do, I, you know, I make the mouth guards for a big portion of the roster. Um, I see a lot of those athletes just as regular patients in my practice. Um, and it's pretty cool because, you know, when you think of it in, in that sports context, it's a little bit different than sort of everyday kind of dentistry. You have to make certain adjustments based on, you know, an upcoming game or an upcoming event. Um, sometimes you have to kind of change your plans a little bit to fit those crazy schedules. Um, and another thing you're dealing with, especially in the combat sports, is you're dealing with trauma all the time. Um, even, even with the NBA, believe it or not, um, I would say nine times out of 10, when someone was getting paged, it was like a laceration case or, you know, a head and neck trauma kind of case. Um, so it, 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 
it was a weird sort of shift from just your regular kind of restorative dentistry. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, with the MBA, anytime there's an injury, the only concern, well, I'd say there's two concerns. One, obviously, is this person okay? But number two, they want to get them patched up and back in the game as soon as possible. So you got to be really quick. You got to kind of think on your feet sometimes. Um, And like I said, it came to a point where any injury from the neck up, we were getting paged. So at a certain point, I found myself suturing an an eyebrow and a cheek Mm -hmm. or a chin, or it's just, they got a little too comfortable by the end there. Um, But it was definitely cool. It was, it was kind of like a callback to the, to the residency days. You know, I'm sure you you have your ER rotations and stuff like that. It's Mm -hmm. surprisingly similar. It's real stuff. And the the big difference is number one, it's not in your office or a hospital, which is a little stressful. And number two, what I've found to be the weirdest part is a lot of times there's an audience, you know, there's people in that medical room, be it other physicians or, you know, other team staff, you know, I could lay sutures all day long, but when I have like six people kind of watching me do it, it's a little, it's a little different. You got to hope you got the steady hands that day, you know? Yeah. Um, But it's, you know, it was, it was a really cool gig and um, you know, we made a lot of great connections there. And, you know, the first opportunity that, that any of us had was with the Brooklyn Nets, um people saw that and it just kind of was like a magnet for all these other opportunities you know we had people from other nba teams when they're visiting in new york if they have an emergency they would come see us you Mm -hmm. know and then same thing with the um you know ufc and stuff like that more people heard about what i was doing and i just became the guy you know and (laughs) Yeah, it was, it was, it was interesting. You know, some of it happened by accident. I would say the first opportunity kind of just fell in my lap. Um, but everything after that was very premeditated. You know, mm-hmm. I went out and I, I pursued these things. Um, nice. After a certain so point. Yeah. You, you started with the Brooklyn Nets and then um, the Liber- New York Liberty came on. And mm-hmm. then after that, that's when you went into the UFC MMA so believe it or not, all of this kind of happened simultaneously. So our, our mm-hmm. first year with the Nets, I want to say, was like 2016, 20, 2015 mm-hmm. or 2016. Um, and then right after that, you know, once I started, you know, in, in the beginning, everybody was very sort of like gun shy about like posting on social media. And there's like a certain level of conduct that you need to have as like a you know staff member and stuff like that. But after a certain point. I was like, I gotta tell somebody. So I started, you know, posting more with more stuff about athletes and just sort of this like day to day kind of stuff. And then yeah. other, other people saw that, and that's what kind of made them kind of kind of gravitate towards me. Um, so I was literally like, you know, just talking to fighters in general, just as like a, as a fan, and you know, it would just sort of come up in conversation. It's like, by the way. I happen to be the the, uh, the team dentist over here. You know, why don't you why don't you come out to a game? Why don't we chat yeah. about? It? It's like, did we just become best friends? I think we did. <laughs> yeah, so that was that was that's kind of what I meant by like premeditated. You know, I kind of right. like I I reached out to certain people, and for one reason or another, at a certain point in my career, they responded. You know, just right whatever, shoot your shot. What are they going to say? No, or just ignore you most likely. Um, right. But, you know, I had a few people kind of reach back out um, and I was, I was surprised about the the response that I got. And I'm so glad I did it because I've, I've, I've got some, you know, really, really good friends out of yeah. it and I've gotten close to a lot of those guys. Yeah. So out of the, the MMA fighters, obviously like trauma is guaranteed, right? Like yeah. you're, you're, you're there and you're almost, pretty confident that you're going to have to do something with Mm -hmm. them but do you treat them more so in your in your private practice outside of that or is that or a lot of it happens um ringside yes so that's almost a hundred that's pretty much a hundred percent in the office so anything that happens there they're going to be triaged basically by the local athletic commission so i don't think I could be wrong, but most of them, I don't think have a dentist like on staff that comes to these events. So I, I think they just triage them and send them to the hospital or somewhere else. But since I have so many of these guys as regular patients, usually I'm the one that sees them after. Like I had a a, a real good friend of mine. Um, this was right before, I think it was right before a fight on like Dana White's contender series. I don't know if you follow that, that show, but literally he was like sparring before the fight and he fractured off number nine, right at the gum line. Um, 
And fun fact, that had previously happened to number eight as well. So he knocked off another incisor, like literally right before. So, you know, it was a question of like, he had to kind of get through that fight and get through that situation and then get back to New York and, and he was able to see me right after. But it's usually stuff like that. You know, we're playing catch up usually the, gotcha. the, the Monday after that event. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. And and most of most of these athletes, um, obviously not including the Brooklyn Nets or the New York teams, but they're flying mm-hmm. out to you. Like they're they're seeing you specifically. How did how did yeah. you or if they live out there? But how do you kind of make that connection to where they trust you that much, or mm-hmm. they want to go to you over someone else or your office? Like it's it's weird, and and you know I've 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 kind of thought about this myself and. You know, it's like it's like getting into that sort of like secret back room that no one else gets to see, right? Like some people get like a little glimpse of it and they kind of see what's going on. For one reason or another, I was able to wait, like really push my way into these sort of like secret rooms. And I've had moments like that where I just have to kind of look around for a second and be like, what am I doing here? <laughs> like it just seems really weird, like backstage at an event or like, you know, like a super famous person sitting on a couch next to me or something or like just weird sort of moments like that. So it's kind of funny. Like once you're in these kind of circles, I feel like other people see it and they're like, Oh, that's the guy. There's nobody else in this room. I guess this is the guy. Um, But when I started out like the, you know, I made some, some connections with some people in the UFC early on um, one of my good friends, um, are we doing shout outs? Should I do a shout out? Should I shout at yeah, someone? Do I'll do my regular voice. I won't shout. But, uh, <laughs> M- uh, Michael Johnson, you know, one of my good friends in the UFC and he was someone that I, you know, I watched on TV on the ultimate fighter years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I happened to meet him and we, we became friendly and he trains down in South Florida. Um, he's part of this team and it, it's gone through a lot of name changes. Currently it's called Killed Cliff, but it was Sanford MMA. It was the Blacks, a bunch of names, but anyway, this mm-hmm. team down there, um, it's got a lot of, you know, UFC hall of famers, current champions, former champions. Like it's a, it's a big deal. Um, and he brought me down one time to start doing like mouthpieces for the guys and, you know, and then when he needs dental work, he comes back to New York. So it's, it's sort of become more of like an East coast kind of thing, like the New York guys, the Florida guys, stuff like that. Um, and the cool thing too, with the mouth guards, you know, when I started that company, I had to. (laughs) I I had to figure out how to do it, you know, globally. Obviously, people, not everybody yeah. can come in and get them. So, you know, I'm able to do it mail order, which is cool. You know, I'm sending out molding kits. I'm doing pretty much everything on Zoom. Um, so I'm able to work with people literally all over. Um, and it's kind of crazy. Like, I've, I've, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but for some, some reason, I've developed this reputation as someone who can get, you know, these mouth guards and things done very quickly. There so, we go. yeah, but it's terrible. It's the worst because Ugh. it's always an emergency and it leaves like zero time and you're relying on like UPS to like save you. The other right. just the most stressful you're like, experience. You'll pay whatever money to get it to you. That's kind of where we're at right now. So I've had yeah. some like big fights over, you know, the last couple of years, like, um, are are you into you know combat sports, boxing, MMA, that kind I, of stuff? I, I honestly I watch all of like the main events. Yeah, that you know the ones that you have to pay on pay per view. That's yeah. what I watch. Yeah, that's enough. But like, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think of some of the big ones. Like one of the big like emergency ones I had was when uh, Jake Paul fought Tyron Woodley. Like yep, randomly, I you saw that one. Okay, so randomly I get a message. I want to say four days before the fight from first round management who represents Tyron Woodley. And they're like, we are in a jam. Like we need this for the fight, like on Saturday night, can it be done? And I'm like, I'm like, it's not impossible. It's almost impossible. It's not quite impossible. I'm like, if you overnight the kit there, we get on the phone immediately, you overnight it back the same day, it'll leave me about half a day to make it and then overnight it directly to the hotel. So they're like, let's do it. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> um, but you know, that was the, you know, that was one of those moments where like I had to kind of look around and like it was so funny. Like I was talking to friends of mine about this fight the day before, and I was on this like text thread, just like talking about predictions and like, oh, you're gonna watch whatever. And then I out of nowhere, literally, the management reaches out and I felt like I was like 
I had skin in, in the it. game. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was like 0.2% involved in this, but yeah. like, I, I, I was like, I put it on the text thread. I was like, you guys are never going to believe the phone call I just got. So, but sure enough, I was able to do it. I got him the kit. I got, I literally got on a FaceTime with Tyron Woodley. Like it was, it would, it would have oh been two God. days before the time. And I'm like showing him how to take a, like a putty impression of his teeth on the Zoom. <laughs> um, and we got we got it done, man. It was crazy. It's crazy. And you know, it's because of stuff like that that I was saying, like I have this like reputation now, and people just they, you know, it's awful. It's awful because it's always no, like but it's that. A, it's it's like, a good problem to have, you know. It's very exciting, you know. Yeah. And 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 you know, I, I geek out more than anything else for for like UFC and combat sports stuff like that. Like when I was doing like the NBA stuff, like uh, you know, I'm not. I, I didn't grow up as like an NBA fan. Like I kind of got more into it, obviously like working there and stuff. Um, but like UFC, I've been into like since day one, you know? So when I see some of those guys, it's, it's a trip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. Very cool. yeah. Um, so I want to get into a little bit and I'm, we're going to come back. I want to talk more about your practices. Sure. And I know it's a little dental related, but I, I do want to get into like, one, the, the mouth guard company, which we were just talking about, and how you managed to get into the apparel space. Yeah. And then, um, okay. yeah, which is funny. Yeah. So, um, and then anything else in between that I don't know about you, I want you to just explain. Because <laughs> just throw it out I think to me, like, I, I remember the first time that we spoke on Instagram, you know, I, I remember, I think you commented on one of my posts or you messaged me or something. And I was like, or you followed me and liked some things. And I was like, what space are you in? You're like world domination. Like, <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? You're like, I, I was like, um, asking you all these questions and you say apparel, you know, the, the mouth guards, NBA, you own some practices. And to me, I thought that was the coolest thing in the world because <laughs> you see all these things that are, are happening where, you know, you were trained to be a dentist and mm -hmm. there are all these opportunities, whether it's within dentistry or outside of it. If you're an entrepreneur, you're an entrepreneur. And you kind of use that, you know, use your network to build um, an entire, you know, empire, mm -hmm. uh, for lack of better term, uh, words. But um, yeah, yeah. yeah, so explain where, where you're at on the other side between the mouth guards, apparel, and everything in between. Okay, cool. I might, I might do like, I might do the last one first and then circle back. Because just, yeah. just what you were talking about is funny, you know, like, speaking like just as an entrepreneur, like, you know, dentistry just just happened to be my vehicle. You know, mm. it, I feel like it could have been anything and my path would have been similar, you know, different, but I would have had like the same sort of trajectory. Um, and I just know, like, I, I never wanted to be defined as any one thing. I didn't want to be known as a dentist. I think that would have been a real disappointment to like the 10 year old me. Like if he mm. found out that that's what I was doing when I, <laughs> when I got old, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah, I get it. I get it. It's like, I get it. Like I'm not, I'm not playing professional baseball or something like right. whatever, but, but you know, it's just, it, it was, it was, it just wasn't exciting enough. And that, that being said, like, you know, as the years progressed, it got more exciting. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't particularly psyched about it in dental school. Um, it wasn't until residency that I really kind of um, had a newfound appreciation for it, you know, and I think I think that's part of the reason I, I, I do the the, uh, the sports trauma stuff because it was the it was the ER, it was the surgery, it was being on call, you know, that was that was kind of the only thing that gave me any sort of passion about it. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, you know, ironically, it didn't come until after after I had finished dental school. Um, but that's, that's kind of like the, the main reason I kind of have all this other stuff. It's just like, you know, I want to do the things I want to do. And I think, you know, just to get, get personal for like two seconds, then I'll bring it back to reality. Like mm. just get a little personal. I think I spent so much of my life just, you know, trying to be cool, trying to be liked by people. And I'm, I'm just going way, way back to like the high school and the college days and just being mm -hmm. in school in general, you know? So a lot of times we keep, we keep a lot of our personality like close to the vest. You know, we don't want to let everybody know the things that we're into for a fear that they might think it's weird or might not be into it too, you know? So it's, it's only recently, I should say, like, you know, as an adult and now that I've found some success that I find 
more of my personality coming out. You know, the things that I'm really into and really excited about, really yeah. passionate about, I kind of just yell to the world. You know, when in the past, you know, you know, I'll get get random on, you know, like I'm 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 just like so insanely into like comic books my whole life. Like I got a crazy collection. I'm reading comics every day. Um and for a long time, that was a very personal thing. You know, I didn't, I didn't post about it and tell people I just did my mm -hmm. own thing. Um, sh sure enough, fast forward a few years, I, you know, I tell some people, I start talking about it and I get a, get a gig with image comics. And this was like just in the last year. Um, so I got like, a, it's not really a job. It's more like an influencer thing, but they send me like boxes of comics for me to review before they come out. Like awesome. what are the odds of something like that? And I think it only happens because people can tell that it's real and it's authentic and it's the real me. And it's something that's just, you know, like I'm no longer shy about telling people right. that. Um, and I think that's maybe part of the secret too. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm pouring energy into things that I really care about things. I know a lot about too, you know, I'm not, I'm not, it seems like I'm stepping out of my lane, but I very much am in my really, lane in terms of these. You're stepping into your lane. I yeah. Think. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like, so I, I think that's why it kind of seems like I'm all over the place. And now, you know, I, I I said, I didn't want to be defined as a dentist. Now I, I'm very comfortable telling people that I started as a dentist, you know, yeah. that's totally acceptable. Um, you, you know, and some of these things are dental related, which is cool too, but you know, I, I just, I don't want to be defined by anything. I want to do what I want to do. I've gone way out in left field in the tech space too. I'm involved in a lot of startups that just have nothing to do with the industry. Um, you know, you mentioned the apparel stuff too, and that's another one we can, we can circle back to every time. Um, nothing to do with dentistry, just stuff I really like, you know, just stuff I want to pour my energy into. Yeah. And we're back. So back to the yeah. dentistry part of things. Uh, okay. Remind me, what was the question you wanted to know about the, uh, the practice setup and, and things like that? Yeah. So that, that was a couple questions ago, but uh, yeah, we can go back ago. to that. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. let's, yeah. So I, I guess one of the biggest things to me, because um, I, I think I, I, we spoke about this. So I started the pre-dental consultants. Um, mm -hmm. That's just one business that mm -hmm. I started or that I'm involved in um, mm -hmm. outside of, of my everyday life, which is going to residency and working my eight to five. Mm -hmm. So I find that to be challenging because I get home and I'm like, all right, I got there are three things we need to do. We're building a DAT textbook. We're building an entire DAT course. We're doing a bunch of things. Um, and I find that my, I'm spreading myself pretty thin. So <laughs> I guess my question to you is one, and we're going to get into like how you started those five practices and like the, the, cause that's one of my goals is to mm -hmm. open up multiple practices. Mm -hmm. um, that's been my goal for a long time. I think that's one of the first steps I need to do is to get one, but how you, um, transition from one to two to five. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the second question, and I know I throw a bunch of questions at you, but <laughs> The second question is, um, where do you find the time to be like involved in, in all of these aspects? Because everyone there, you're not some superhero that has, you know, 48 hours in one day, everyone mm -hmm. has 24 hours, everyone needs sleep, you know, people drink more coffee than others, mm -hmm. but everyone ultimately has like the same time of the day. So that's, those are my questions. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I might do this in the reverse order too. Well, I guess it's kind of related to, um, only because the second one's fresher in my mind. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I'll, I'll, I guess I'll say a couple of things, um, to sort of answer both questions, you know, the limiting factor, at least for me, um, it, it, it's always the, the team around me, you know, especially as a dentist, it's, it's one of those things that's Im impossible to scale because you only have two hands, right? Like, so how do you how do you replicate this? Um, you know, let alone multiple times. You know, so for me, it's just it's just you know surrounding myself with really smart people, um, people I can trust, uh, people that are way better at their job than I am, um, and, and that's kind of what's done it for me. So at each one of my places, you know, I typically have like an operating partner. So there's a you know there's a dentist there who has equity, who's invested, who, you know, for all intents and purposes, that's their practice. That, that, that's more their practice than my practice, the way that I look at it. Um, and I'm lucky that I've, you know, I've encountered people that 
kind of share the same vision and wanted to kind of join this team and and kind of do this with me and you know just to just to comment on the kind of people they are like you know you know my partner Dr. Steinbeck in Brooklyn was a classmate of mine at NYU he was a co-resident of mine at Long Island College um you know we started building out practices in Brooklyn in like 2013 um, we have, t- you know, two practices there now that he basically manages essentially full time. Um, my spouse, also a dentist, also went to NYU. She manages everything in Manhattan for me. Um, I kind of bounce around, like, as far as my schedule goes, like, and, and I guess I'll touch on the time factor too. Um, you know, I'm usually doing patient care normally about a day and a half a week. Um, the rest of the time it's kind of split between like administrative stuff, um, uh, much less exciting things. Um, and then, um, you know, the side projects and a, a thing that's worked well for me is I try not to co-mingle. It's for a couple of reasons. Number one, I have the attention span of a goddamn hummingbird. So if I start mixing multiple things to get like nothing gets done. So I got to have like, you know, set times to do certain things without mixing in other things. That's number one. The other thing too, is like, it's not, it's not fair to my partners either. You know, like if I'm, if, if, you know, if we're partnered somewhere in a particular project, you got to know that when I'm there, you're getting a hundred percent of my time and my focus. You know, I'm not, I'm not taking calls. I'm not doing other things that aren't related to this. So that really helps me too. Um, but yeah, just, just creating boundaries is super important. And I, I think it's the same thing for personal time too. You know, I'm, I'm notoriously difficult to get on the phone. Um, there's a reason for it. Usually I will turn it off and put it somewhere, you know, I put it somewhere or, just, you know, um, but I would say, it's almost to the point where I go through these sort of like, <laughs> like borderline manic depressive because there are certain times I can get wrapped up in something um, with just an insane level of focus for, you know, five, six hours staring at a screen and it feels like no time at all. Um, and then I have other times where I just need to completely shut down, you know, and I just won't leave the house for two days and just want to just chill and relax. And, you know, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think, I think it's so hard to kind of, keep the noise out, you know, when it's time to relax, when it's the weekend, when it's these things. So, you know, that's, that's one of the biggest challenges too, because things obviously come up at all times and you have to deal with it. But the less of that, you know, on your downtime, the better, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that makes sense. And um, mm-hmm. in terms of the, the practices that you have built, you have the operating partners, um, do you have, do you, do you use like any sort of like management team? Um, do you have like mm-hmm. your right hand man or woman, um, that maybe either helps you run them from, you know, remote or mm-hmm. can you explain a little bit of that? Yeah. Um, it, it, it's kind of different for every setup. Um, mm-hmm. and I have a few different types of practices too. Like I have a, I have a really big spot by Yankee stadium, which is more like a big, clinic, you know, bunch of ops, bunch of people we're seeing, you know, 40, 50 patients a day. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a little different. Um, <laughs> but you know, I, I do have a sort of right hand man. I have an office manager that's there full time. He's not a, he's not a dentist, but he does kind of help me manage that one. So, yeah. you know, I, um, I do like a fair amount of the administrative stuff, but I try to do like high level stuff. Like I'm not running staff meetings, not right. doing payroll, you know, it's, it's more strategic than that. It's, um, if I were to give it a fake made up title, I would say it's more like a clinical director, you know, actually looking at the dentistry, looking at the billing, looking at the day-to-day operations and more like the patient experience kind of stuff. Um, but that's up there. Um, in Brooklyn, I have another team that helps me manage the, uh, they do the billing for me. They help me with the administrative stuff. This is not a company. These are just friends of mine that kind of came up with me at the same time and just to get really weird and um (laughs) one of these guys worked for me like it was must have been one of his first jobs when he was 18 years old he worked doing collections for my office um fast forward you know 10 12 years and he's like a full-on adult with four kids but he started doing dental billing and management and Sure enough, we synced up 10 years later and now he's, he's helped me expand. He does all my billing everywhere. He does my management in Brooklyn, helps take care of a lot of this stuff, um, handles the bulk of like the HR kind of things, which is kind of cool. Um, 
Yeah, but that's what I was saying. Like you, you need people like that. Like that's that's the limiting factor. There's always going to be opportunity. There's always going to be spaces. There's always going to be money. Believe it or not, um, yeah. you know, it's 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 those people that you need. You know, so as soon as I find somebody like that that has the same vision, it's like okay, now we're going to find a new project, and now we're going to get started on this. Um, how I guess why why don't I? So I looked at the names of the practices. They don't appear to be like a part of the same group um mm -hmm. was there a reason why you didn't either name it the same practice or come up with a different name for it mm -hmm. yeah i'll say uh two things so in brooklyn it's a little different in brooklyn we have um we, we kind of have like a the same branding there we have two locations on the same name but the other ones you're right it's totally separate uh mm -hmm. i'll say i think it's a new york thing I think there's a tremendous amount of pushback on any sort of like branding like that or like anything that smells like a chain, I think you're going to get pushed back from. So we don't do that. Um, you know, the focus is on the clinicians. Um, and this is another thing too. I mean, like, I, I, I guess call it like a tip, you know, I was very careful pretty much from day one that I wanted as much of the branding and the PR and the advertising and everything to be, associated with me personally, as opposed to any specific business or entity or mm -hmm. opportunity, you know, so, you know, that's really kind of helped all of us, you know, and, and we all take the same kind of approach too. like, you know, if you, if you, you know, Google Dr. Steinbeck, it'll blow your mind, you know, it just so happens behind the scenes. That's my partner. That's my operating yeah. partner who runs this practice. He was on the cover of dental town two months ago. Like, what are you wow. kidding me? Yeah, get out of here. Um, also, that was a good issue. You can see that was the newest um, facility that we made um, in uh, in Park Slope. Yeah, but but that those are the caliber of people I try to surround myself with, um, and and we've all sort of elevated together. You know, it's 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 been some years, but you know what what better <laughs> what better indicator that you're on the right path than stuff like that? You know, be, you know on the cover of magazines and, and this kind of stuff. So. Pretty cool. Yeah, that's very cool. And then mm -hmm. um, last question until we'll, we'll wrap all of this up because I, mm -hmm. I know you got to go. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the I want to bring it back to the UFC fighters and the, mm -hmm. and the NBA and all of them because obviously they do come to your office. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain kind of your interactions with them within the office and then I guess based on HIPAA and things like that, like what you can and can't do, what you can and can't post. Mm -hmm. uh, because obviously I think that's like a space that's really difficult to navigate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the easiest thing for me is like, like I'm almost never posting anything like super dental related. Like I think my audience is, it, it's not, it's not a hundred percent into the dental work. So I'm typically not posting cases. Like I, there was a point where I started to, and just people were like, grossed out or not into, you know, this is, it's and not my, the unfollow button. <laughs> yeah, it's not my, I don't think that's my audience. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, 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 if I'm not doing that, I don't think there's much of an issue. Um, but you're right. Like there is a limit to what you can do, but as far as like my interactions with them, you'd be surprised. Uh, I think athletes in general, at least my experience, they've, they've almost all been pretty down to earth. They make great patients. You know, I think they're used to taking direction from a coach or a trainer yeah. or a teammate, you know, so t they typically do what they're told. They follow directions. They're there when they're supposed to be there. Um, and like, it's funny though, too, because like I, I, you kind of forget how big some of these people are. Like I meant that figuratively, but literally too, like it's hard to kind of get the passages, but you kind of forget because like, you know, there's, there's one instance and I won't tell you the name, but, you know, feel free to guess it at any point. Um, you know, pa patient had an appointment. We ended up, it was, it was such a, uh, let's call it VIP. It was such a VIP that my wife and I ended up going into the practice on a Sunday when we're closed just to literally do like a hygiene visit for this person. So office is closed. No one is around. It's just the two of us that opened the practice room. He came by himself, which right away was shocking. Um, very nice, very quiet, down to earth. We, we were doing our work and things like that. And I think at one point he was getting his x-rays taken and I heard like a little bit of noise outside. 
Um, so I kind of peeked out the window and no joke, there were like six beefy security dudes blocking like the whole block outside. Oh, so I'm like, okay, that makes more sense to me <laughs> now. Now I get it. Cause I've, I've seen all different kinds. I've, I've had some, some that, that have a, have a handler that don't okay. like to communicate themselves that will have someone else do the talking for them. Wow. Um, so that's always it's a little not, bit not even in my vocabulary. I don't even... <laughs> Yeah, it's weird. It's That's it's wild. it's a little weird. But in spite of all that, everyone's been great. You know, I I, I can't say that I've had a bad experience with anyone. Um, I really had to think about it. No, I I don't think I've had a bad experience with any of the athletes that we've interacted with. Um, everybody's been super cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Um. All right. So, anything that we didn't cover that you think everyone would want to hear just about your experiences. Oh, I think I lost you first. I lost you just for, I lost you just for a second in the middle there. Sorry. Um, so Mm -hmm. any, anything that, um, we didn't talk about today that you think the listeners would want to know maybe about your experiences within the dental world outside of it? Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. Like, I, I think maybe I'll talk a little bit more about, you know, some of these startups that I did. So like I started my mouth guard company in 2019, 2018, 2019. Um, and at that point I'd become friendly with a couple of UFC fighters. And I kind of like pitched a couple of guys on it. Like, Hey, what do you think if I started doing this? Um, and, and they were very, very supportive and they, they helped sort of like introduce me around. And that, that was sort of like the catalyst to that business. Um, Granted, at the time, I had no idea how to make a sports mouth guard for professional. But I was like, "That's that's the total. That's extra. You know, that's just a plus if I can figure that out. Let me let me figure out how to structure the business first because I very much did it like top down. I didn't start down here and slowly build it up. I went right to the top. You know, I was like, right in the UFC. I have the connections. Then I'll figure it out. And luckily, like you know, I was able to figure it out pretty quickly. I had my um, my assistant for 10 years, who's now a hygienist, Ricardo, was the one who kind of helped me figure out this recipe. We were there just kind of cooking these things up. And, um, you know, over the years, we've refined it a little bit. But I think now we have like just the best, the, the best, like there's no question about it. It's the best protection for for combat sports, especially. And we've we've had a couple guys in the NFL using to um, yeah, just that's uh, that's a whole nother thing. But yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, but I'll tell you, it's it's led to so many other things because, you know, I had a point now where I had this very specific kind of clientele with the UFC. Um, and honestly, like, if you can sell people, you know, like a premium mouth guard and, you know, they're not cheap. I retail for about 300 bucks, which, you know, in dental insurance terms isn't a lot. But, you know, for someone who could get something for 40 bucks on Amazon, that's, that's, that's up there. So, you know, I'm thinking to myself, like, I have this client base that's willing to pay $300 for this, you know, sports related thing, I bet I could sell them something else. Um, So I kind of just ran the gambit for a period of time. I was doing this like home workout platform with some of the fighters. Um, And more recently, I started this apparel line just, and it was kind of like a throwback to like my love of like, you know, comics. And it was sort of some of the old toys back in the day, the 80s, like, you know, not that you would know, but everything was like really gross back then. Like it was like garbage pail kids and mad balls and like, and yes, everything was like really disgusting and sort of over the top. So I kind of like, you know, I got some really good artists and we've been putting some stuff together still within this like MMA space. Um, and I did the same thing that I did with the mouth guards. I pitched all my guys, all the fighters I've been working with all these years and every single one of them down the line was we love it. This is great. What can we do to help you? And they helped again, just to kind of slingshot this up. Um, you know, and it's, again, it's like super fun. It's something that's way exciting, has nothing to do with dentistry, but you know, I'll give you an example of how one of my meetings went. So like I'm, I'm meeting with the, with one of the artists and I'm coming up with designs. It's all monsters and stuff and just silly stuff. And, you know, at a certain point, you got to think outside the box mm-hmm. and, I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm pitching, I'm, I'm, I'm pitching him my idea. And I'm like, so what I'm thinking, 
and I do like a rough sketch and he's going to, yeah. I'm like, I'm thinking of like a Kraken, you know, like a big squid monster, like Pirates of the Caribbean, uh-huh. um, basically getting flushed down the toilet by like, a, so I'm like describing in very great yeah. detail how I want the tentacles, how it, I thought it would be funny if he was reading like a nudie bag on the toilet yeah. and then it happened to get sucked down. And like, I had to stop for a second and I'm like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> You're like making these like crazy clinical decisions and now you're talking about, yeah. But this guy. was just as important. Every That's detail crazy. was accounted for to yeah. the point where I had these silly little inside jokes in there too. And it's just like, it's just so funny, but it's just, it's such a treat when I get to do stuff like that because I take it just as seriously. It just so happens to be nonsense, like absolute nonsense. Um, but it's kind of fun and it's, you know, it's something different. It doesn't feel like work, you know, when you said like, how do you find time for this? Like, it's not, it's not work. It's just like right. silly stuff, you know, and I, I really enjoy those kind of things. And, um, you know, luckily people are responding. It's taken off. I think, you know, I think we got like, a, I got like a hundred thousand followers on that page somehow. Um, I got a lot of these athletes involved and it's just That's super good, cool. super good time. Yeah. Crushing it. Yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to leave it off with this. Um, okay. Where do you see your future? Obviously you have a long career ahead, um, whether or not that one, one and a half day a week dentistry goes down to one or a half a day, but mm-hmm. where, where do you see um, your future just within the space that you're in? Um, you know, as you progress, you know, over mm-hmm. the years. Yeah. Well, I think, I think that's like a really personal thing, right? Like, what are your goals? Where do you see yourself? Um, Because, you know, speaking for myself, mine have changed quite a bit over the years Mm -hmm. Um, to the point where it's almost silly. Like I, I, I I won't even tell you what my actual goals are (laughs) with this whole thing, but I'll tell you in the beginning, you know, at the beginning, what was my definition of success? I thought I was going to be in a nice office, like up in one of those buildings on Park Avenue, just doing good dentistry, being a good dentist. Um, But as soon as I started seeing the business side of things and how much money certain people were making just by running a business, it completely changed my outlook. And it was like, I don't want to be tethered to something like that. You know, Mm -hmm. I just want this to be my vehicle so that I can continue to grow and expand and scale. And then, you know, parlay that into the, into the next thing, you know? So now it's to the point where like, you know, I'm just trying to kind of grow this empire a little bit, find as many, smart, talented people as they can that share the same vision and want to kind of jump on board and then just kind of continue to span until we have this really, really big sort of dental operation. Um, And then, you know, on the other side of things, all these side projects and things, I'm always looking for opportunities outside of dentistry, be it my own startups or other people's startups. You know, I'm invested in a lot of companies, like I said, um, completely outside of dentistry, just really, really random stuff. Um, I don't know if you've seen it's like workout app called FitBod, but uh, I invested in the seed round of that years ago. This other one uh, called Kush.com. It's like a marijuana marketplace. I was in that yeah. since the seed round. Cafe X, that's another one. Um, this other beverage, co- like so much like random stuff just so that I can have like a really diversified portfolio. And, yeah, you know, I, sure. I try to follow things that interest me, you know, and, you know, that's where I'm at right now. And, and a lot of your connections have opened up those doors for you. Yeah. Well, another thing I'll say quickly too, is like, you know, how important it is to find people that are, I'll say smarter than you. I don't, I don't think I'm particularly talented in anything, you know, and I've said this before, like, you know, I'd consider myself an expert at like maybe two or three things, not, not a lot of stuff, Def- nowhere near as many things as I have on my plate. Um, so you have to recognize that and find people who are really good at those things that you're not, you know, and, and just mm-hmm. accept the fact that you don't know everything. Um, and just try to build this team. And, and, and another thing I like to do, I really like to kind of surround myself with like-minded people. People have the same kind of drive as me. And I found that those kind of people have stayed with me over these last, you know, four or five years and everybody has sort of come up and just, you know, I mentioned one of the UFC guys, Michael Johnson is like the first guy Mm -hmm. who I, I became friendly with. I'll tell you the second one. Um, I met Aljamain Sterling, 
I want to say like four or five years ago, I got to double check, but you know, just randomly, he was patient line, came into my office, helped me out with the mouth guard thing, helped me out with the apparel thing. And we've just always been really great friends. And, um, you know, his fiance, Rebecca too, is great. And, you know, at the same time, I'm elevating my stuff. This motherfucker is a UFC champion right now. Right. You know you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just, it's, it's just funny. And that's, you know, I, I, I feel like the my, my strength comes from my circle. You know, any yeah. one of any one of these people that I, you know, that I work with and talk to on a daily basis, I can call on and they can really help kind of give me that boost when I need it. And and I, and I hope the feeling is mutual. I hope any one of them would say the same thing about me. Yeah. It might be a stretch for, for Aljo, but, you know, <laughs> we, we, everyone else for sure. He, he'll be fine. He, he's going to yeah. be fine with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think it's important to just, just, you know, just have a really good circle and, and, you know, people, people that support, support you and share that same, same vision and mindset. Yeah. It's a good way to end this. Well, sure. maybe one day we'll link up, um, sure. but I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Uh, great time talking to you and, you know, hopefully we can keep in touch. I think that it's going to be fun watching what you continue to do. So well, thank you again. Thanks, bud. Anytime. It's my pleasure.